It snowed last night, as you can see. Not really enough to the point where I'm gonna bust out the snowblower and start snow blowing the driveway. But it did remind me that I've got to get working on that cutting edge I talked about in this video up in the corner. Sneak peek, new toy. For anyone keeping track at home, yes. We're still leaking hydraulic fluid. Mike over at Sunny Slope, uh, link his channel up in the corner. He actually just posted a video about his Kubota BX and getting that whole manifold replaced under warranty. Uh, we're still under warranty on our machine. It's got six year warranty on it. So I've got to reach out to the dealer. I haven't done it yet just because I haven't been using the tractor. I really should have, but it's just kind of slipped my mind. So we're gonna get that fixed. But today I wanna work on this gas pipe cutting edge for the blower that I've been talking about. You guys left a lot of good comments and I don't know if I explained the ratchet strap system that I wanna use well in the last video. Basically my plan is to put a hole on either end of this pipe that I cut and have the hooks come down and hook into that and pull it back. Uh, it's not gonna be rubbing on the ground. It will be above the ground. Essentially the pipe would actually be keeping it from touching the ground. So hopefully by the time this video is over, you'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna measure the width of the actual cutting edge because I'm gonna match this pipe to the width. And then I'm going to cut the pipe I'm gonna snap a line using a chalk line on this pipe, hopefully to keep it straight. And then I'm gonna do my darndest to use an angle grinder and cut down the entire length of this pipe to create a slot where I can wedge this on. I'll probably have to cut down there, cut down it twice. But the first is gonna be the most important line. I gotta keep that straight because it's got to match the cutting edge on the blower, which from what I can tell is pretty straight. There's a few little dings in it from hitting rocks and stuff. So first things first, let's measure this up. Let's get it cut. And then let's see if we can snap a line. she cuts. see we've got this pipe cut to the right length and the plan is going to be to cut that slit and have it hook right onto that edge there so that it has a way to tension back on to the snowblower um, now the trick is going to be to get a straight line all the way across there is a flat in one spot of it where the seam is and I think I can use that to mark it but um but I'm gonna set up and do this on the tailgate of my truck so I have a little bit more space. All right, a couple small changes since a minute ago. Uh, I know I said I was gonna snap a chalk line down this. However, when I was doing some thinking, I realized one, getting a chalk line straight on this is not gonna be easy. And two, as soon as I started moving it around and touching it and with the snow falling now, a chalk line was gonna rub off in, in a matter of minutes. 
So, I grabbed these two Sharpies, a silver and a gold, and they'll write on metal. And between the two, I hope there's enough ink left in them to get a line drawn. Because the silver one is running out, and I didn't test the gold one, but I bet it's probably also close to running out. I'm also going to use this piece of one by four. I think it's one by four. It's one by something. And what I should be able to do is snug this up against it. And that'll give me the ability to get a level line all the way across that I can draw. So let's, uh, let's do that now, I guess. I'd say that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna go grab another piece of wood from the garage. And what I'll do is I will clamp the pipe to that other piece of wood so that this pipe doesn't roll on me when it when it's when I'm cutting it with the with the angle grinder. I gotta stop and check my beard every once in a while to make sure it's not burning. This thing is torquey, but it does chew through batteries. Uh, that's a five amp hour right there. We made it, I would say 80% of the way down the seam of this pipe, which is, is pretty good. Uh, we also cut the pipe. Um, I, I am happy that I have a I have a 60 volt in there from our string trimmer, and I'm gonna slap that on here. It's a 60 volt, uh, but it's like a 12 amp hour battery, or I think it's even more than that if you use it on a 20 volt device. So uh, let's go grab that. I lied. It's a nine amp hour, not a uh, not a 12, but still a pretty good bit. Uh, it's full charged, as you can see there. So uh, we'll slap it on this bad boy and get after. All right, folks, that's all she wrote. She's pretty straight. I think the saying is good enough for government work. So um, I'm gonna let everything cool down a little bit. I'm gonna throw the batteries on the charger. I'm gonna load up a new wheel in the grinder because we did a number on this one. She's pretty worn down. So uh, I'm gonna do that and we'll come back out here in a little bit and hopefully uh, finish her off. So far I'm pretty impressed with this grinder. It was not expensive and it's doing everything I ask of it so far. I mean, granted, I'm not asking a ton of it, but if I had one gripe on it really, it would just be that it's chewing or it will chew through batteries, but that's pretty much any cordless angle grinder. It's not just it's not a DeWalt thing. So I really can't fault it too much in that regard. I mean, that's not bad. I'm pretty sure we're just about. Eh, it felt like that battery was starting to give up at the end. It's definitely warm. But I think that should do it. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in this. Uh, I'm not gonna bother showing it on camera because it's boring. And uh, we'll bring it over to the tractor, throw it on there and test it with my, uh, my ratchet strap idea and we'll see how it works and if anything's gonna be dragging on the ground and if it's something we can do. Whew. 
Woo! I think it worked. And right as the snowblower was sitting down on the ground, let's take a look. All right, you can see it's on the edge. Went on pretty snug all the way across and it's sitting right on the ground. Let's see if I can get the camera even lower. It's sitting on the ground right with the skids all the way across. The hooks were what I was most concerned about and as you can see, they're not touching the ground. They're not far off the ground, but they shouldn't touch the ground. Not on this side and not over here either. They're kind of protected by the skids on the side. And then that ratchet strap just comes up and over the back. My biggest concern is that the ratchet strap over time could loosen. Uh, obviously some stuff could maybe hit the ratchet strap down around the hooks where it's very near to the ground. So I would definitely consider that a flaw in this design. But in the future, maybe it could be worked out with an extended set of hooks or maybe an eyelet that's like a ring that's clipped into the side of the pipe actually that could be a good one actually that's maybe a change that i might make to it and we'll come back if i can get a carabiner or something or a clip uh like a super heavy duty clip that's long enough where i could put the ratchet strap through that and have the clip into the pipe that way it's only going to be the only thing underneath the snowblower would be metal that's something I'm gonna look into doing. But other than that, everything I had in my head came together to, to work with this. So we're going to call it good for now. We will try this the next time we get a decent sized snowfall. Uh, right now, the snow that's on the ground is, I actually want it here because our driveway is frozen up solid with ice. So I want the snow here to kind of regrade the driveway and keep whatever. It's just better to leave the snow that's here right now, trust me. Let's talk about this grinder now. Overall, I'm a fan of it with some caveats. Now it should be said for a $150 grinder, I know that I'm not gonna get the torque of a plug-in grinder. And that's just based purely on the fact that a plug-in grinder is getting voltage directly from the wall at a much higher rate than a 20 volt battery that you're gonna stick on the back of this. Similarly, these things are battery hogs. It's just, I knew it going into it. I've talked to a bunch of people and it doesn't matter who you buy, whether it's DeWalt, Milwaukee, uh, Makita, Hercules, or whatever the brand from Harbor Freight is, these things are gonna chew through batteries because you're using a lot of power and you're putting a lot of torque on it when you're trying to cut through metal. It's not like you're using a circular saw where you're cutting through wood, which is a relatively easy task compared to grinding away metal. So for the 150 bucks that this thing retails, I'm impressed. I, I don't think you're really gonna get a better grinder on the market in a cordless package for $150. I know at the time that I'm recording this video, I think it's on sale for even less than that on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below if you wanna go check it out there. But if you're looking for a cordless grinder and you have DeWalt batteries already, this would be a no brainer for me. The thing is this, if you have the DeWalt batteries, you probably have a ton of them because almost every tool, unless you're buying bare tools specifically, comes with a battery these days. Honestly, buying a tool with the battery just makes more sense because the batteries are really expensive and you get a break. I think usually you're paying like 35 or 40 bucks for a battery when you buy a battery with the tool. If you were to buy the batteries on their own, uh, I think these four amp hours or five amp hours are typically like 60 bucks. So unless you're buying like a one-off DeWalt tool, it always makes sense to take the battery with the tool because you build up a stock of batteries. If batteries go bad, you can toss them away and you've got extras and you've always got batteries charging. If it comes with a battery, it comes with a charger. So there's like four chargers over there on the table and I just have batteries lined up in each one. And as I go through a battery, I pick the next one up and I stick a battery in the charger. It ends up working out that unless I'm running like four different tools or Jackie and I are each using a tool and we're chewing through batteries, you don't run out of battery juice. You've always got one charged and ready to go for the next task when you need to grab one. If you're a DeWalt person, buy this thing. If you're not a DeWalt person and you're just entering the cordless tool market, personally, I like DeWalt. 
Some people like Milwaukee. Everybody makes good cordless tools these days. But I started buying DeWalt tools when I went cordless and I continued to buy DeWalt tools because I was able to build up that stack of batteries and chargers and always have the juice that I needed to get the job done. As always, thanks for watching everybody. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It's not all tractor and tool stuff. We do a lot of general homesteading, farming, gardening, raising animals. So if you like that sort of thing, click the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.